So I decided um, some of you might want to see how I'm putting down this tape. <clears throat> it's aluminum foil tape, uh, cold backed, uh, cold weather adhesive back. And I stumbled onto the fact that some of it's thicker than the other. I think this stuff here is 4.3 mil and the other stuff was 2. I think the four, the, the bigger, the, the thicker stuff is probably better for the application. But um, I'm not really that concerned about it. So you got to put this in sticky side down, which makes it a little tricky. But I just cut um, like a 28 inch board. That's about the amount or length of tape you kind of want to deal with at one time. And I just uh, relieve the edges, which you can see there, just as a bind on the tape. Um, and it's slightly less than half, which everything's that way nowadays anyway, but this is like um, 7 sixteenths because these, these grooves are, eight, are half inch rather. So anyway, lay the board down for a guide. I want my tape up, so I, I select the length of the tape that's either the exact length of the board or just a little bit less. It gives me um, some wiggle room or it gives me some leverage, if you will. Pull the backing off. I know they make plates for this, but they're pretty expensive. I had to wait for them to get ordered and sent here. And this is really just pretty much just one roll of tape, which is way cheaper. So anyway, take the paper off, fold it over. Now I'm a little bit cold. I just started this morning. Last night, if you'd seen me, I was on a roll. So you get a rhythm. Anyway, take it in half like that, pinch it and pull it out. So it makes it kind of narrower. Set it down in the groove and slide back and forth as I'm doing it. Then release and kind of do that again. So I got a kink in this one. There we go. So boom, line up the end of the tube. Come back, spread the end, and then kind of go down. Be careful on this stuff. This, this is like a little razor blade. So just be careful how you touch it. Make sure there's no corner sticking in. Set the board in. And that little snapping you hear, sometimes is the adhesive kind of grabbing on and then releasing it. And I fold it back. Again, being very careful because this stuff will really cut you. And I just run down it carefully. Boom, another one. And I tend to work this way, then slide over and keep working in front of me. And I'll, you can do about five rows, I've found at four inch spacing ahead of you before it starts to feel funny in your back. Um, I was using scissors to cut this, trying, but it's such a clean edge, you can't, you can't separate the paper easily, so I'm just tearing it. And I go all the way down to the end like this and stop, and the weight keeps the tape from rolling up on itself, and I, then I take the last bit off while I'm holding it, flip it over, fold it in half, Switch my hand position. I haven't figured out a better way with the hands yet, but maybe somebody else will. And then, see, I got a little kink right there, but I can deal with that. Again, it's the morning, it's cold, I'm cold, the tape is cold. Or cold meaning like having that threat. And I do this because it kind of releases some of the stickiness on it. Okay, spread it out. Get rid of that kink. That ends a little crooked, but I've noticed that it really doesn't matter. It kind of flattens out. See, there you go, snapped a little bit, because this one went in a little rough. And at first I was worried about making sure that it was absolutely, totally bottomed out, which I still am, but the profile of the tube is obviously a tube, so if it has to push down a little bit in the middle of the tape on the bottom, it makes room for itself. So, that's it. Here is the uh, foil taped and ready for PEX tubing, except for this one little spot here. I just realized I missed, but I'll fix that. Um, <clears throat> design I'm doing for my heating system in the floor. So, we went with two zones as opposed to one. And you can kind of see the ends of it right there, of the first zone, which is our living area. So we're going to have a sofa, the sofa over here, some cabinets, you know, kitchen counters, stuff like that, refrigerator. 
And then you can see my returns. I'm gonna turn the camera sideways. Um, the reason I stopped taping over here is because this line is the cabinet line. So once the return lines will supply and return, supply and return, get into the, or underneath the cabinet, I'm then gonna insulate them. Pardon that hand block there. Because I, I don't want to lose any heat. There's no point in heating under the cabinets or the built-ins are in. I only want to heat where we have actual floor. Uh, and then again, I'm gonna run them long. I'm gonna run the lines all the way up the wall here when I cut them. And then that way, the basement's right below here. It'll allow me plenty of length for the lines to get down into the basement and to interface a manifold or whatever without any couplings. So here's the second zone. This is with bunk beds over here, closet, tub, toilet, and then about that much of the rear will be in the actual master bedroom. Another reason we decided to go with two zones is because we have two kids, babies, and sometimes you need to like shut as many doors as possible between you and the crying baby so the other baby doesn't wake up. So we went with two zones so I can close this door that's going to be uh, here. And the next door is going to be somewhere, I had it marked, it's probably blocked, somewhere in this area. So with both those doors closed, some seals on the top, we can get the noise and, you know, deal with the babies. So that's the basic gist. I've been doing this step by step and showing you guys, you know, along the way, each step. All right, thank you.